welcome to the virtual booth showcase for EasyGov at the National Tech and Leadership Forum. We are very excited to have you here. Today I have with us one of our project managers from our R&D team, Shelby Girk. She has been working on an innovative project that we are proposing to a lot of different states at this point in time to change the welfare delivery of our country. So Shelby, welcome on board. Thank you so much, Hanisha. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about my project in such a big platform of NASCO. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're very excited to have you here. So just to start things off, I'm very excited to know more about the tool, but before we get into the innovative project that we are talking about, let's try to identify some of the problems that are currently existing with our welfare delivery system. So while developing a tool or a project or even the EasyGov platform, what were some of the problems that you identified with our current welfare delivery system? So yeah, so uh, there are many problems that are there in the program centric in the program centric delivery system that uh, uh, delivers benefit to the beneficiary. So I'll uh, like to bring your focus first on the leakages. So uh, leakages are of mainly two types. First is the identity fraud, but we commonly known as the ghost beneficiaries or the bogus beneficiaries. A person who whose name is whose name may be known existence is applying to the benefit and getting the benefit. Uh, for example, the ration facilities and uh, pension schemes that uh, that we came to know about has a lot of these types of beneficiaries in it that are bogus or uh, non-existent. Second one is the duplicate, the issue of duplicate beneficiary. That is, the a person is applying for a particular scheme for multiple times, and there is no cross check for that. So uh, these identity frauds, uh, these related identity frauds, have been solved or at least greatly eliminated by the introduction of Aadhaar. So the problem is very much solved in this part, but there is there is uh, this issue still exists. The other problem related to the leakages is the fraud related to the eligibility criteria. So what happens is once the ident uh, identity of a person is established, there is still some eligibility rules that the person needs to fulfill before get getting a benefit for a particular scheme. Now, even though the identity is established, uh, the eligibility criteria for which the person is applying for may not be verified. For example, uh, I may not belong to a poor section, but may I, I may end up getting a college scholarship benefit. So this is this. Now, uh, what happens in our country, the, our, in our country, the targeted approach is being followed to identify the beneficiaries, like who is, uh, who is the beneficiary, who are the poor people, who are in need of the benefit. So the two main databases that are being used to do this are the uh, socioeconomic sense uh, socioeconomic database secc database that we know and the income certificate so these are uh, used greatly in our country and there are various problems that i think is associated with these two databases first uh, as we know is the issue of verification we don't know for sure like there are some cert uh, there are certain uh, uh, certain cases where uh, like the person gives con consent to their income certificate like this is my income but there is no proper way of verifying it whether or not it is this person's uh, exact income or not so we just approve it the officials just improve it so this is this is the scenario of verification and then there is a scenario of forced certificates that we have heard so many times in news the person uh, gets it uh, gets himself this uh, forced certificate that is not true then there is a issue of time lack of timely upgradation as you know the database of secc is being updated in once in a decade and uh, a decade is a very long time for that uh, for that credentials to get changed and for a person to get out of the delivery benefit but right now as uh, as we are in 2021 we still refers to the uh, secc database of 2011 mm -hmm. so these are some of the problems that are commonly known and identifiable but but there is also one other problem that we at EasyGovs identifies and are working dedicatedly to work to solve that, that is the program centric welfare delivery. So uh, what is program centric welfare delivery is uh, every benefit that is being delivered to our citizen in our country is uh, either based on a program or a scheme. Like if a, pers uh, if a particular person is applying for a benefit, uh, is uh, it is he or she is getting the benefit only if he or she is fulfilling the program centric criteria for that particular scheme uh, so we uh, what what happens in this scenario is like i uh, like i can only apply for that particular schemes i am eligible for like nobody is asking my need now what actually i i need so what happens it, it uh, the person will not say to the benefit like if government is giving me some benefit why would i say no i will say yes even though i need it or not so this lead to inefficient resource utilization on the government part. It may lead to the duplicacy of the benefit getting delivered. 
and it may also not solve the problem of benefit getting delivered so even though we solve all the identification process and database related problems that we are facing we may still end up getting not the required benefit to the person but the benefit that the government has designed uh, if you are understanding what i am saying so uh, we at easygov are working for this part only that uh, the most required benefit and the most needed benefit is get delivered to the right person at the right time yes no definitely indeed i agree i believe that the ineffectiveness of the current program centric welfare delivery system is something that we often undermine and you know we don't really focus on it as much and just coming back to how you mentioned that easygov is developing a tool to um kind of get over this problem i would now like to get into just understanding what kind of tool are we developing so what exactly is this mo tool this innovative project that we've been talking about that will help change the face of welfare delivery and take us away from program centric delivery system so yeah so our philosophy is to uh, is to take the program centric delivery to the family centric delivery so what happens in a program centric delivery is a, uh, a individual is taken into consideration and not a family uh, like there may be uh, a family uh, who uh, in which there are two farmers who are working on a same field of land and uh, under a particular government scheme uh, government supportive scheme those two farmers may still may get the duplicate benefits out of that but uh, and also there is a issue of uh, uh, the right benefit not getting delivered like in my family there may be a person who is who is wanting to who wants to pursue the further education and doesn't have the money to pursue it and uh, as per the program centric criteria of the government and or the schemes designed by the government the schemes that i my family may be getting would may have been the skill training programs or the health benefits but not the scholarship schemes mm -hmm. so what happens in that so what happens in that scenario is the family centric approach that we are taking into consideration in our tool in our innovative tool we are making recommendations we are considering around 200 to 300 attributes not only of an individual but each member of that family and we are judging upon that those socio economic parameters uh, based upon um, our machine learning algorithm what is the most suitable benefit that the family may should get not only this uh, once we like uh like i judge like we our tool can judge uh from the many aspects that we cover in a socio economic profile like health benefit uh, housing benefit education occupation food whatever it is our tool can accurately predict what is the most required benefit that this family need at this particular time period so not only this it can also predict uh, according to the uh, scheme what are the who are the most uh, needy benefit like if 1000 applicants are applying for a particular scheme and government may not have the uh, budget to give the benefit to the 1000 applicants government may have the budget to give the benefit only to the 500 applicants so what our tool does in that aspect is it uh, judges each and every family on base on the basis of that uh, on the basis of those parameters that are that are required to judge upon and it scores them it gives them a needy score like this person is 80% applicable this person is 90% 95% and thus we can uh, based on the logic and based on the recommendation of that machine learning tool we can we can easily make a list out of that and choose the uh, first 500 to give the benefit to not only this uh, there are many other uh, uh, many other uh, advantages of this tool that we are still working on and it's still in the development phase that includes the uh, uh, taking family as a unit and then recommending benefit based upon the progressive path as in we can uh, we can actually uh, see through the data and predict and make of make a chart of welfare delivery so as to take out this family out of the welfare delivery system in 10 year 10 years of period that is what is progressive about the term progressive about so these are some of the benefits right now that we are seeing as of our tool and it is in as i told you that is in developing stage and uh, we are introducing new technologies and working on it right now so many advantages uh, are there that are still to be developed and still uh, will get to know more about it yeah but i must say even in the development phase it sounds amazing because you can i feel like when you can identify the difference between needy and beneficiary that's when you know that it is going to change the face of the welfare del delivery system um but just coming back to how you mentioned that you are taking a lot of attributes to be able to um compute into this database it does sound like it might have taken a lot of ex extensive extensive um 
just work to develop this database and also work on the back end. And that might have been only one of the challenges. So what were some of the challenges you faced while developing this project? Yeah, we faced many challenges. We have to do a lot of research before uh, going ahead with this uh, tool. One of the major challenges that we faced while developing this is, of course, of the database. Like I'm talking about 200 and 300 attributes of a single individual. We, know, we may not have that uh, certain amount of data present this time uh, to develop such a tool. And also there is an issue of uh, data privacy and data silos that are associated with it. The data is not structured, is not in a, is not in a proper format. And uh, also there is not... There, uh, there is lack of data that is uh, that is at our discretion to develop this tool but we cannot uh, let this data obstacle create create an obstacle for us to develop this tool so what we did was we thought about uh, uh, using human in loop scenario so what is human in loop concept uh, machine and human work in coordination to develop a tool and with the help of our domain knowledge this this things are get done so what we did was uh, to train a machine learning model, we need to have training data first on the basis of which the model will learn and make its predictions later. Now we didn't have that training data, so what to feed to the system. So we used our domain expert knowledge in that scenario and for each of the parameters, we analyzed what are the, uh, we analyzed the way that in, in, in which we can train our system with, our, with the uh, generated data so that our system can make recommendation and uh, so that knowledge is based on domain specific knowledge and that knowledge is modifiable we kept the flexibility of changing it at a later stage even if we, we we may get like we may we may be wrong it is not the actual data it is our domain based knowledge data mm -hmm. and although we are uh, very good at predicting that but still we have kept a scope for improvements there like we have kept a flexibility issue like uh, once we get the data, the system will keep on uh, learning and keep on improving itself. And we also have this discretion of changing the base data uh, once we get the actual data out of our predictions. So this is this is how we have solved the data issue, and we are working uh, uh, and we are we are able to uh, develop the AI based system by using human in loop and uh, domain knowledge domain expert knowledge even without the lack of data. I, yeah, so that's that sounds like a very robustly developed um, project and a very robustly developed tool because again, the issue with using data is always, you know, there's so many companies that always venture into creating um, some sort of project with data, but there's no data available. So it is amazing how you were able to take in some of your domain knowledge and turn that into the data that you need to be able to develop this tool. So yeah, so uh, there is also uh, one concept of explainable AI that we are working on. Like uh, uh, we thought about our, our system can make predictions, but uh, what if one no wants to know what are the basis of these predictions? We cannot be sure like this can, this the, uh, the uh, you end user cannot be sure of this recommendations, right? So we have developed a contribution analysis part of this. We can easily identify what are the parameters, what are the, uh, beneficiaries parameters that are leading to this particular result and what are the weightages that uh, that our system are assigning to each parameter that is, that is uh, resulting in that particular benefit so in that way this helps this helps in dual, uh, this helps in dual way one the end user is getting to know and it's not a black box the ai our ai recommendations are not black box the person can know what are the exact uh, parameters on the basis of which our system is predicting the required results and second there is a scope for improvements we can exactly know what are the recommendations what are the parameters that are inputting and if there is a certain gap in what we think might must be the result and the ai results we can solve that also with that so yeah, yeah. So that actually sounds like a very, like I said, very robustly developed tool because I believe at least from where I come from, I've worked in the tech industry, but I haven't heard of explainable AI, human and loop AI. And those are very, very um, detailed things to be able to make sure that our data system works. Um, and just coming back to uh, the philosophy of EasyGov, we know that we're trying to keep data and privacy at the core of every single platform we develop. And I believe with this one, we haven't left any uh, stone unturned as we develop the project. So super excited to see how this turns out and super excited to bring this to the world. Um, and any final closing thoughts, I would really appreciate. Yeah, so uh, it would be very great to see uh, people coming up to see our product. And uh, I think uh, I, I have been working for a very long time on this project now, and I think this uh, this uh, tool has the potential to change the discourse of welfare delivery in the uh, in our in, in our country very well and can actually benefit those 
who are in actual need so i feel very very blessed on my part to be a part of such a project and having this opportunity to work in the on the, on a project that might change the welfare discourse of india definitely and knowing that you're working on the project we know that you will change the the course of welfare delivery in india so very excited to see this come ahead um but it was great having you here today shelby again amazing on how the work on the project is progressing and yeah thank you so much for joining us today